Welcome everyone, today we have a new build video for Diablo 4 and today we have an interesting FK Barbarian Thorn build. So the theme of this is, some of the viewers were asking, hey, could you do a Thorn build? And other players were saying, hey, what if I want to farm stuff and AFK? You know, if I get tired, I need to like rest, right? So maybe if you go for like a few minute break, go to the bathroom, you can leave this build down and monsters will just kill themselves when they're hitting you. So this is actually quite interesting. Now currently there are three classes in the game that have thorns included in the talent tree, including the necromancer and also the druid. But after looking at the skill tree and everything, I do believe the barbarian have the most capacity to go with a thorn build and also to make the most use out of it. There's also two codex for the barbarian to use a thorn. So our build will focus on the thorn build. Now do keep in mind guys, this is a theoretical build and you do need a lot of items that increase your thorn damage and also items that increase your maximum HP. So this is quite nice for the Barbarian. You can be durable, you can be dealing thorn damage. You can be benefiting for a lot of other effects to get bonus thorn damage. Now at the end of the video, we'll also talk about some of the potentials for the Barbarian to synergize with the Necromancer, which does have Iron Maiden over here, which allows you to deal damage back to enemies who hit you. So we talk about the synergy with the Thorn Barbarian with Necromancer as well. Now coming over directly to the skill tree for the level 50 Barbarian, we can see that we're going to one point in Flay and also its upgrades. So when Flay deal direct damages, they take increased bleeding. We will be dealing some bleeding damage and you will see later with a weapon choice. And also this is the highlight with Flay because Flay will provide us with four thorns for three seconds, which stack up to three times, oh, stack up to five times, which gave us 20 thorn. It's quite a bit, cause here you can see there's other classes with Thorn that the Necromancer with three skill points, you only get nine Thorn. So it's actually quite a bit of Thorn over here. And I'm not sure how it's calculated, but likely you can get a lot of Thorn because on the side for the Druid, you have this particular Animal Companion Boom, which gives you 900, uh, 796 Thorn. <laughs> the numbers are a little strange, right? So definitely keep that in mind, and we'll be looking into the, all the thorn skills and passives for the Barbarian. Now for the choices of the core skill, we'll be going with Whirlwind. As for Whirlwind, we'll go with level 5 Whirlwind for the highest damage. And also each time Whirlwind deals damage to enemies, we kind of gain a little bit of the fury back. The highlight over here is that we'll be using a slashing weapon. So Whirlwind will also be bleeding damage, Whirlwind will also deal bleeding damage for 5 seconds. And this together kind of helps because Flay also increased bleeding damage. So we have a sub bonus of that damage in terms of bleeding. And later in the skill perks, you can see we have one point into bleeding slows enemies. And then we deal additional damage to bleeding enemy. So this is a little bonus damage. Now the passive pressure point allows us to debuff enemies with vulnerable while we're casting whirlwind, which will be damaging enemies quite often. So 20% is enough, we can go even with 10%. Of course, if you do have skill points, you can go into 30% with vulnerability for 2 seconds with whirlwind. Now as we come over to the defense section of the skill tree for the barbarian, this is when the fun begins for the thorn build. Now do keep in mind, I believe we have to actively selective mode over here to get two skills in the same tree. So we'll be going with the challenging thought and also the iron skin, which means that we won't be going for a skill in a weapon mastery. So we can only have six active skills and keep in mind of that. Now we'll be going for the max level of challenging shout, which allows us to taunt enemies and have a massive damage reduction. And this will also be the theme of the game. We'll be reducing damage, we'll be fortifying ourselves, we'll be getting shields, and also we'll be getting armor. And we'll also be healing ourselves. Now while casting the challenging shout, we'll gain a bonus of 20% max life. Notice guys, this is going to be massive. Because here we get 20% maximum life, and here we get another 15% maximum life with three skill points into the passive imposing presence. This is because we will gain additional thorn for the bonus of maximum life we have. Each two bonus max of life, we gain two thorn. It's pretty much one to one, right? So this is going to be a big factor for the build. And of course, thorn is increased by 60%, <laughs> tough as nails. So the defensive capacities of the warrior is massively boosted because of the bonus HP and then translates into thorn for more damage. So more durable you are, the more damage you have. Now, after that, we also have the upgrade that Challenging Shot is activated, gain Thorn equal to 50% of your maximum life. So <laughs> this is a loopy run, right? So you gain Thorn, you gain maximum life, then you get more Thorn. <laughs> so this is actually really nice perks. And if you're going for the Thorn build, you can't miss this one. 
Now the second skill in the defensive tree, Iron Skin, is also not bad for us. So as for Iron Skin, we'll be going for level 5 as well if we can. And Iron Skin also absorbs for more missing life. So here I decided to go with Tactical Iron Skin, which allows us to restore life. And this can be served as a form of healing. So when HP is really low, this can be really good. And on top of that, while having Iron Skin, we can also have the Iron Warrior, which makes us unstoppable. And this means the crowd control. Now, it is also optional to have a double fortify amount with Iron Skin. So it is definitely a choice. I prefer a little bit of healing because you're losing HP. When your HP is low, Iron Skin is much better, right? And of course, you can go with more fortify. Because there will be some passive we'll see very soon that allows you to deal more damage with higher fortify. Now the balling skill tree for the Thorn build is quite interesting as well. So we'll be going with increased shot duration by 30%, because we know the biggest source of damage is actually taunting shot or the challenging shot. So this shot gives us a massive boost of HP and also Thorn. So the longer this shot goes, the better it is for us, right? And also over here, we also have the shot heals maximum life per 3% 3 per second. Now, as you guys will see with the choice of ultimate skill, we'll be going with damage reduction while having Berserk. Most of our source of Berserk will be coming from the ultimate Berserk, and we also have the Capstone, which allows us to have increased Berserk duration and also increased damage. For the active skill of the bowling section, we'll be going with Leap. Leap is actually very versatile in terms of escaping enemies, and you can also jump into the enemies. Now, in case you want more Fury for your you know, Whirlwind, you can also gain 40 Fury while jumping into enemies. So Leap is actually not bad for escape and also engagement, and also jumping between stairs. Now as for Weapon Mastery, we mentioned that we can only have 6 active spells, and with Elective Mode, you'll be going with 2 of the defensive spells. So we won't go with any of the Weapon Mastery active spells, but we'll go with a lot of passive. For example, while taking direct damage with Thick Skin, you gain 1.1% base life as Fortify, and this is really nice. Now if you guys are finding yourself constantly having more life, more fortified life over 50%, having the counter offense is actually really good. So every point gives you 5% increased damage, up to 15%. Now because our build consists of having a whirlwind which also does bleeding damage, and also have increased bleeding damage, one point in hamstring is actually not bad. Of course we can go with the cut to the bone, but we're not really a bleeding build, right? So one point give us slow while enemies are bleeding. And here, while enemies are bleeding with no mercy, you'll deal 13% more damage. And while enemies are immobilized and also stunned. Now we did have to go into one point in pit fighter. If you find yourself to you know, want to deal more damage, you can go into more pit fighter as well with the spare points. Now the choice of ultimate skill for our thumb build will be the Berserker, which gives us unstoppable and also increased you know, damage dealt and also the movement speed and also fury generation, which can be really good for the whirlwind. Now over here, in order to be a little more durable while spending fury, so one point in a temper fury and three point in invigorating fury, we'll be healing for six percent of our maximum life for every hundred fury spent. And for this one, if you find yourself to be very durable, you can take away this and then come to the offensive spells over here. Let's say, you know, 15% more damage while fortified, or you can go with any of the spells over here for more durability and also more damage. So this is the flexibility of the build. And, you know, I thought we might want to do more feeling, but it really depends on how you fear with enemies. And finally, for the capstone, we'll go with the unconstrained, so this means the Berserker's maximum duration increased by 5 seconds and also increases damage by 25%. Now as we come to the Codex section, you can start to see one of the reasons I'm going with Berserk. So I'll just quickly show you guys the reason behind Berserk as well. So while Berserking will deal direct damage, uh, will direct damage dealt will inflict additional bleeding damage. And while we bleed enemies, we also, you know, we also deal additional damage to them. So it's uh, more source of damage as well. Now, you can see that we have lots of choices for the Thorn build for this particular section because well, everything helps. We go with the highlights. So firstly, you definitely want the Needle Flare aspect, which means some Thorn damage have a chance of you know doing damage to everybody and 20% chance of dealing to everybody else is actually really good. And this means when one enemy hits you, there's a chance of hitting everybody else. When there's four hitting you, the chance is also massive. Now I do believe this only works for the Barbarian, while Berserking, we can also gain Thorn. So this means while Berserking, we'll be dealing bleeding damage and also Thorn damage to enemies, which will become AoE. So this is the cornerstone of the build. Now because it will be quite durable and we want to get even tankier, a lot of defense perks are really good. 
because we have iron skin, we go with iron warrior and we become unstoppable. Now, if you want to have more defensive capacities, you can get a magical bubble. You can have the ignore incoming range damage while having a distance, you know, having you know, a bubble, a barrier. So those are definitely optional. And similarly, aspect of numbing worth and also aspect of the protector also gives you more barrier and also more fortify as you spend your resource. And also you can go with disobedience and also might. So those are, you know, lots of the good defensive perks, but ideally you'll be very durable already. Now in terms of defensive perks, if you want to park your character F, K and stand there, and maybe grind a few monsters while you leave your computer behind, so you can go with aspect of inner calm. And this allows you to increase damage dealt while standing still, which is quite nice because enemies will be hitting us, right? Now because we'll be using Whirlwind, the dire Whirlwind aspect is not bad for up to 20% increased critical chance. And similarly, we can go with Quickening Pulse. So whenever we hit enemy with Bleeding on Elites, we have a chance of reducing the no ultimate skill cooldown. And no, no ultimate skill cooldown for the defensive skills is actually massive. So here we just want to bleed Elites. While we bleed Elites, the defensive skills like the Challenging Shout and Iron Skin will become lower cooldown. And this allows us to be more defensive and also more offensive. Now as for the choice of the resource aspect, we can go with Echoing Fury, which gives us more resource of Fury while we're having the shot skill. And because we'll be casting shot a lot for the increase of thorn damage, this is actually not bad for the whirlwind. We can also look into the unrelenting fury for more fury to refund back with killing enemies with whirlwind. For utility, we can go with the berserker as aspect. Now berserker's aspect can extend the berserker duration, which means while we're berserk, we have additional thorn, and we also have additional bleeding damage, and also additional damage and movement speed. So this is definitely not bad, especially when you can get more critical chances. And to get critical chance, you can be berserking while in whirlwind. So this is actually not bad. So the 20% critical chance is very nice. Now, finally, in terms of mobility, we can go with the, well, with the wind striker aspect if you have a lot of critical chance. But ideally, your build will focus on HP and also thorn. So if you don't have that much critical chance, don't worry about mobility as well. The major source of mobility will come into the leap. So you'll be jumping away and jumping into the fray of the battle. Now, hopefully you guys like this creative build for the Thorn Barbarian build. And the combination I was thinking of is if your friend is also playing a Necromancer, see if they want to perk into the Iron Maiden, because Iron Maiden will curse enemies, and then enemies will take damage when they deal direct damage to you. And this also means that, you know, when more enemies are cursed, they also take more damage. So this combines really nicely with the Thorn of the Barbarians. Now, of course, we mentioned earlier for the Druid. The Druid bonding with Spirit Animal, you got 700, 796 Storm. I'm still not sure how this works. Is that better than my Barbarian? So let me know what you think about this one, guys. And let me know in the comments. Is it like a ROM number coded over here? I'm not sure. So we have to see in the game when the game launches. Because the Druid won't be getting Spirit Animals until, you know, after the next Storm ride. Now before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. So I just started a YouTube channel with my girlfriend yesterday, and you can see this is only 12 hours old, this YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally, instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too, and she's really shy. So I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.